What's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the brand new Nook Box 7 from GMK Tech. Now on the channel we've taken a look at a lot of the Nook Boxes that they've created. And this one is actually coming in just a bit larger than the Nook Box 2 or the Nook Box 3, which basically was a palm-sized 4K mini PC. But with good reason, I mean, we've got a more powerful CPU here with a boost up to 3.3 gigahertz. And this actually comes with 16 gigabytes of RAM ready to go. It's also got a replaceable M.2 SSD. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's still a very small PC. Real quick, I'll give you a look at this compared to an Xbox One controller. And basically, the Xbox controller is bigger than this mini PC, so it's still a very small form factor unit. Inside of the box, you're obviously going to get the mini PC itself. We get a user manual and our power supply. This is a USB Type-C power supply, and it'll do up to 30 watts. By the way, this will support PD power in, so you could run it on a battery, and we'll take a look at that by the end of the video. But when it comes to I.O., over here on the right-hand side, we've got three full-size USB ports. Now, two of these are USB 3.2 Gen 2, and the other one is 3.2 Gen 1. Moving over to the left-hand side, we've got three full-size HDMI 2.0 ports, and around back, we've got our power in, which does support PD power in. We've also got a 3.5 millimeter audio jack and two gigabit ethernet ports. So this is an actively cooled PC, which means we do have a fan. It really doesn't get that loud, even under full load. And they've also added a little LED around the unit. It does set it off a little bit while it's sitting on the desk. But when it comes to the specs, for the CPU, we have the Intel Pentium Silver N6005. Now this is a 4-core, four 4-thread four CPU, up to 3.3 GHz, and with the way they have the TDP set up, which is up to 15 and 18 watts, depending on the load, it will run continuously at 3.3 on all four cores. We've got an Intel UHD iGPU with 32 execution units, 16 gigabytes of LPDDR4X RAM running at 2,933 megahertz, a 512 gigabyte M.2 SSD. It's using a 2242 M.2, so you can replace this if you want to. Built-in Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5.2. And right out of the box, this is running Windows 11 Pro. All right, so here it is, Windows 11 Pro. I've got a bunch of stuff installed that we're gonna be testing out, and I'm actually really surprised by the performance here, and it actually really comes down to the TDP. So these chips here, usually when they're in smaller units, run at about 10 watts. This is actually boosting up to 15 watts, which was pretty surprising to see. Now, uh, we've got that built-in fan, so it does stay pretty cool. As you can see, we've got that silver N6005, 16 gigabytes of RAM, and the built-in UHD graphics with 32 execution units. Real quick, I did want to show you this. Um, we'll just open up Core Temp and CPU-Z. So if you take a look right here, this is kind of the total package power. At idle, not bad. We're not pulling much at all. But as soon as I stress this CPU out, you'll see that jump on up to 15 watts. And actually, when the GPU is also in use, we can get up to about 18, which is really great. That way we can get full clocks out of the CPU and the GPU at the same time. And this will go up to 3.3 gigahertz. And the performance it's putting out is actually pretty great for using this as your everyday desktop. Now, it's not a super powerful machine, but web browsing, email checking, you want to do some family photo editing, you could do that. I mean, I wouldn't rely on this as my main money-making machine if you're a photo editor. But yeah, getting some photos edited for the family, this little thing will handle it. We've also got Wi-Fi 6 built in and Gigabit Ethernet. Loads up web pages really quickly. And uh, since we're boosting that high, this CPU can actually stay at those 3.3 gigahertz clocks, which really help out with performance. First thing I wanted to show off was a little bit of 4K video playback. Uh, as you can see, my screen scaled down because I went up to 4K with it. We'll check out this demo video. Make sure we're at 4K, stats for nerds, full screen it, give it a second to buffer out because that's usually when you get your drop frames. As you can see, there's four there. Let's actually reset that real quick. And we'll go to 4K again. That'll reset the drop frames up here. And you see, once we loaded back in, we got two drop frames. But uh, this is about 2,500 frames for this whole little demo video here. And by the end, we only had four drop frames. And as you saw, two of those were just from the initial load in. I've had really good luck with 4K video playback on these chips. And in total, we're only pulling around 12 watts from the wall right now doing this 4K video. 
So yeah, I mean, 4K from your favorite streaming apps or even natively is no problem at all. 4K, 60, HDR, these little things can definitely handle it. But now I want to move over to some gaming and see exactly what we could play on this thing. And first up, we've got World of Warcraft 720p with a low medium mix. Uh, from the slider, the graphic settings were actually right there at 5, so midway through, but this does turn some to low, some to medium. I think a few of them are even set to high, and we can get an average of 80 FPS out of this. Not bad, fully playable, and to tell you the truth, taking it down just a bit more at 1080, you could go ahead and lock this at 60. Another one I always like to test is Skyrim. This is the original version, 720p, low, and I probably could have taken up some of the settings to medium, but I just left it right there, or we could have left it at low and went up to 900p. This is one of those older games that does stress out these lower-end CPUs, and as you can see, it's running it fine. I was browsing Game Pass for some games that looked a little easier to run, given we have such a low-end system here, and I ran across this one, Super Lucky's Tale. Haven't played this one, but yeah, it's not bad at 720p. Got a few dips here and there, but you could get through this. And finally, Left 4 Dead 2, 720p, high setting. So yeah, I mean, these older Valve Source games, you could definitely play these just fine. You want to go with some Portal, Portal 2, Half-Life, Left 4 Dead, as you can see here. These games are going to run great on this little system. The next thing I want to take a look at is some emulation. We're going to start off here with PSP. And we really only need to test one of these games to know how well PSP is going to run on this system. And uh, here it is. This is Chains of Olympus, 2x resolution, Vulcan back in running at 60 FPS. I also tested Tekken 6 and I was able to upscale that to 4X, so the N6005 can definitely run PSP games at full speed, but what about GameCube and Wii? Time Splitters 2, Dolphin Emulator, 1X Res, DirectX 11 back in, really great performance. If you take a look at Afterburner, we're pulling under 8 watts with this CPU and we're at a constant 60 with this one, but it's not a super hard game to emulate. So let's uh, move up to something just a little bit harder, and that's going to be Automotilista. This is one of those that does struggle on lower end chipsets, but we're at 60 with this one. Now another one that I tested was F-Zero GX. The first track, you can run it at 60 FPS, it actually works great, but as soon as you move over to Fire Fields, which is one of the harder ones to emulate, really falls on its face. So yeah, I mean, there are GameCube games that this thing can do at full speed, and it also handles a lot of the Wii stuff really well also. Moving over to PS2. So uh, as we know, with all of these emulators, there's easy ones to emulate, there's hard ones to emulate. When it comes to Crash Bandicoot, Wrath of Cortex, this is definitely an easier one. And you can see that we're running really great here. But uh, as soon as I took it up to something a bit harder, like Gran Turismo 4, which isn't a super hard game to emulate in the first place, we got an average of around 43 FPS out of this one. And by the way, I also tested the new version of PCSX2 with the Vulcan back in, and that seemed to be a little worse performance. So here we are with 1.6 and DirectX 11. And the final one I wanted to test here was some Wii U emulation using SimU. Bayonetta 2, Vulcan back in, async shaders are on, and it's really struggling, but if you take a look at Afterburner, this little CPU is trucking it up to 18 watts here. Now before I wrap this video up, I did want to give you a look at this thing running on battery power. Now I know it's not for everybody, you might as well just buy a laptop by this time, but uh, it does support PD power in, so I've got a little power brick here powering the mini PC and GMK's new monitor. And this little monitor is actually really nice, super thin. I will be doing a full review on this. I think it's a great accessory for the Steam Deck. But yeah, if you did need battery power for some type of reason on this little mini PC, you could definitely do it. So overall, it's really not a bad little mini PC given the form factor here. And when it comes to power consumption, at idle, this is only pulling around four watts from the wall. 4K video playback, around eight watts. While gaming, it really depends. This could jump up anywhere from 10 to 15. And the max that I got this to pull from the wall, given that that TDP is going pretty high on this little thing, was 23 watts. But yeah, when you compare it to other PCs in the market, it's definitely a low power consumption unit. And it really comes down to what you want to do with this. As you saw, it does GameCube, but not all GameCube games. PSP, you'll be good to go with it. 
and really anything under that. And uh, you've got light gaming, indie gaming, 4K video playback, and if you just wanted to use it as an everyday PC for web browsing, it'll get the job done. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. If you have any questions or if you want to see anything else running on this mini PC, let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.